Welcome to the Nature's Image Farm podcast. We're glad you're here. I'm Greg. And I'm Susan. And together we're raising seven kids on the farm and learning life lessons along the way. So pull up a chair, rest your heels, and let's talk all things bees, homesteading, and the old time ways. Let's get after it. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. in here nothing what? i was just getting ready for you to be here what are you eating nothing i don't know nothing smells like chocolate covered strawberries not at all that was just um i was just rearranging all the papers and stuff like this no big deal nothing happening over here you can't nothing well Susie, happy valentine's day i love Susie. I'm glad you do, even with all my flaws. Oh my gosh, it smells amazing in here. Chocolate covered strawberries. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> you got a little something in here. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me clear that. Oh, it, I had a napkin because I was wiping off your desk. It was filthy. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Nature's Image Farm Valentine Bee Chat. It's a lot of fun tonight with the, you know, one of Susie's favorite things is I Love Lucy. And so I thought it would be fun to uh, do a little I Love Susie uh, chat and uh, <laughs> just uh, phones ringing and we're off the hook there. So uh, anyways, we thought it'd be fun to do a Valentine B chat with everybody tonight. Uh, the stream team is normally on on Wednesdays and, uh, you know, it's Valentine's Day and the fellows are out uh, with their wives, taking them to nice dinners and... I guess I should have taken you to a nice romantic dinner somewhere too, huh? I did make you pink spaghetti. Pink spaghetti. You know, I was thinking about, you know, if you're uh, if you're like in the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana uh, area, you know, there's a very nice place that we, we sometimes take our wives called the WC Steakhouse. Now, comment in the in the comments below in the comments here. Do you know what the WC Steakhouse is? If so, I, I, I wouldn't. Um, they don't take reservations. No. Nope. Um, I don't think they put napkins in the bag hardly ever. Uh, or do they? Well, you get a suitcase. You can, yeah, you get a suitcase. You can get a suitcase. You can get a suitcase. You, um, you know, it uh, just uh, dinner just slides right down. Exactly. And right out. You, and you feel like royalty. You know, when you're eating at the castle, you just feel like royalty. So that's the kind of hillbillies we are. Uh, we <laughs> so oh, look at that. We got we got some folks. They know they know what's up. Okay, so uh, Rob <laughs> B's Apiary, White Castle. That's it. The WC Steakhouse. Yes. Yep. CD Cook seventy seven. <laughs> oh, our buddy Chris Morrow. Yep. Look at that. So uh, look at that. Uh, Cap B. Oh, Darren. Darren Cap. Hey, Darren. Good to see you. Oh, Sleepy Holler, ho Sleepy Holler's Homestead says, mmm, oh, White oh. Castles. We're trying not to tempt you there, Jeremy. We're trying to, we're trying to be behave here for you. Well, anyways, hey, welcome uh, to the Valentine Day Bee Chat tonight. Um, we thought it'd be cool to kind of check in with some different couples, married couples um, across the country to see what is the three secrets for a successful beekeeping or homestead marriage. Uh, and it's a lot of fun because a lot of folks sent us photos and then their three tips. And so that's going to be a lot of fun talking about that tonight. Um, it's been, uh, wow, what a week it's been. It's been. It's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday. <laughs> and um, we didn't get a romantic outing tonight, but we did get a couple days away in the St. Louis area here recently, didn't we? Yes. Well, it was only one day, really. A 24-hour period. That's true. Yeah, it, it was, the rest it was pretty was driving, quick. but that's yeah. okay. I always like to spend time in the going anywhere when some windshield time. And it seems like that's when you get a lot of good talking in and you can sort through some things. And 
sometimes find yourself getting in trouble and then hopefully getting out of trouble. And uh, you just you figure a lot of things out. So at the one, you know, it's not easy um, trying to do uh, anything on a homestead or a beekeeping by yourself. And there are a lot of times where you're blessed to have a help mate and it, it really makes things um, easier. Uh, Susie, we've been married for. You don't have to take your shoes off. 20. This will be our 24th year. Yep. 24 years, seven kids, four dogs, 34 cats, and bazillions and bazillions. I think so. I think it was more than four dogs. Well, some, yeah. See, this is why you got to have someone with you who actually knows all the stats. But it's, you know, you know, a lot of folks, you look at different married couples or friends that you know, and you might say, you know what? They really got it together. You know, they really, I, I wish, I wish our marriage could be more like theirs, or I wish we had together like them. And sometimes people look at us and think that we've got it together. But truth be told, we're like every other married couple. We've got good days. We've got bad days. Uh, sometimes we argue. We don't quite get along. We don't see eye to eye. Um, but we're going to talk about that tonight and share some tips on the, where a lot of folks find that they are finding success, uh, not on, on the homestead, but also beekeeping, but as a couple. And I think that that's a lot of fun. Uh, we just got back from that trip in uh, Saint, near St. Louis, Missouri area. Uh, it was an honor uh, to see all of you guys there at the Eastern Missouri Beekeepers Association. Tom and Melissa uh, Sosman and Dan and the whole crew there put that on. And what a great crowd of folks. I really enjoyed the time um, that we spent there. It was a lot of fun to go not as a vendor and go just as a speaker um, to, to spend time with folks and look them in the eye and hear their story and answer questions and just fellowship was uh, a, a tremendous uh, blessing and such an honor to spend that kind of time. We're looking forward to uh, some more conferences coming up. The next one we're traveling out to is uh, the Wisconsin conference. That's going to be a lot of fun there too. But um, let us know in the comments here on the side. You know, if you've ever been in a place where you like, man, this this marriage is so perfect that I think I'm going to write a book and go on a speaking tour telling the whole world how perfect my marriage is. Could, wow. We'll, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. I don't know that there's a many folks who could say that. I think there are things that we can find uh, that are beautiful and perfect throughout the imperfections. And I think it'll be fun to kind of uh, talk about that a little bit tonight. So did I get the numbers right so far? 24 years. Yep. Seven kids. Yep. And um, a lot of hard lessons learned. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks again for tuning in tonight. We've got folks from all over uh, the country uh, tuning in. Uh, Keith Spillman, Hallelujah Bee Farm. Jeremy, Lindsay, Sweet Harlan Honeybees, the Tar Heel Beekeeper. Uh, Kodiak Lee. Redfish. Oh, we've got Grammy Midwife checking in. Cottonland Apiary. Uh, Caps Bees. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Via Honeybees, M&J Habitat. We could go on and on and on. We really appreciate you guys spending time with us on the most romantic night of the year. I don't think we're going to get into the, uh, the Valentine Day consumerism thing quite yet. So let's just keep it real. I wanted to share something with you. We uh, had an, a, an amazing opportunity this week. Um, if you're in the beekeeping or homestead space, you know, there is this thing going on where there is an awful lot of doom and gloom and there is an awful lot of fear mongering and there is an awful lot of um, you should be afraid or scared. So click on this video so you can find the light and you can find the answer so you can persevere through all of the doom and gloom. And I got to tell you, uh, that's getting a little old. It was an honor uh, for uh, Susie and I to spend a little time um, with another YouTube channel. Uh, they interviewed us and we spent a little bit of time with them. And I wanted to share a little clip uh, from a really incredible Homestead YouTube channel. So uh, check this out. Hey guys, we are so excited that you joined us today. There's a real, lot of fun things going on this time of year. We just got interviewed by Brad at the Big Family Homestead, and they are doing some phenomenal things. 
If you haven't already checked out their channel, check out Big Family Homestead. Brad, you've got some exciting new things going on on your channel. Talk to our folks about that. Well, thank you, Greg and Susan. Yeah, it has been a delight being here and hanging out with you. Let me tell you what, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And we are starting a brand new channel, Country Life News. And if you don't mind going over there and subscribing, just open up another tab. It doesn't cost you a penny. Go on over there and subscribe. The reason for that is uh, we're kind of getting tired of all the neg negativity, the drama, all of the high school nonsense in the homesteading preparedness world. Amen. Um, and to be honest, it's not how God has, has said this is the best way to live. So we're going to try to elevate instead of just da 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 da, -da. So that's why we're starting country life news and it's going to be all stuff that's uplifting what's going on in the farming world what's going on in the country world what's going in beekeeping world what's going on and how to bake things but staying away from the drama so country life news and i really greatly appreciate that so thank you guys that sounds awesome yeah we're excited to uh, spend a little bit of time with you talking about all the things but i think as folks are moving forward so many folks are worried uh, about things that they can't control. They're worrying about things that can't worry for them. What I love about what you're doing is let's focus on the things that we can actually do to make a difference, to be a difference, and to be a positive change uh, in this environment, in this world that we're living on. That's what we're called to do. And I'm so excited uh, to learn more about Country Life News. And we're so honored and humbled to be just a small part of that as you guys are moving this thing forward. Country Life News, I can't wait to see what you guys do. Well, I am I am very grateful that you guys have had had me on and uh, that you're helping out. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. You bet. Brad, thanks again. We'll drop all the links below. But uh, again, Country Life News, check it out. You might say, be there. Or be, or square. be squared? Oh, come on, man. I mean, we had to. I know it was cheap. It was quick. It was easy. But you had uh, to. Don't, don't. Not to. Uh, so, so stay wasn't that cool? Uh, Brad, big family homestead, really excited about uh, Country Life News. That's going to be really exciting to see them check in and, and uh, how what they're going to share. I think that's something important to think about as we all move forward. There's a lot of things we can be worrying about, but uh, why waste any energy or effort worrying on things that aren't going to be worrying over us? Let's put that, that time and effort and energy to making a positive difference, making change where we actually can make a difference. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, spending more time with Brad, Big Family Homestead. Uh, so keep an eye out on the Nature's Image Farm YouTube channel uh, with a, with more of from that interview. And also be sure to check out the Big Family Homestead for the Country Life News and uh, us, our little parents with them. So um, that is uh, pretty cool. We've got some questions coming in already. Let's go ahead and take a question before we uh, kind of bring on uh, some of our first tips from our pal, Tennessee, Tim McCandless has a question. Tim's got a question for Susie. Tim, let her rip. And while Tim is typing his question, <coughs> we're going to play Jeff. Kidding. Are we going to eat some more strawberries live? <laughs> Okay, Tim's got an update. Uh, question for Susie. Can I get a top bar hive update? Oh, my. We're just going to open the, we're just going to rip off the Band-Aid, huh? Yep. It's your hive. It's your update. Well, to be fair, we're going to place that blame exactly where it belongs, which is Greg put my name on that top bar hive. I did not claim that hive, nor did I take care of that hive. So, Greg, how is your named hive doing? Deader than a doornail. The Dun, top da, da, da. bar hive is <laughs> no longer. It made it through, let's see. That was, what, two seasons? Made it through two two seasons, <laughs> and then here it's, it's in its third season. And what's interesting to think about in something like that, we can talk more about that later, but um, it was a top bar hive. And to try to get in there and to treat and to check for mites and all those things, is an absolute nightmare. How do we say it's very fragile? Oh, must be Italian. Must be Italian. <laughs> so 
So yeah, more on that later, Tim. But uh, no, that one uh, that one did not last. I mean, it lasted two years, but uh, it is what it is. Um, let's see. We've got another question here before we get to some tips from William Sandraford. Any update on success with the beetle murder sauce? Great question. Uh, William Sandraford, the, uh, the beetle butter or the hive, um, the murder sauce that we were using, thank God we have not had to use that for two, two years now, maybe probably two years or so. Uh, we were using that for years and years at the old farm. Um, we've talked about that quite a bit on some other stream team chats where we were having a lot of hive beetle issues. And uh, we had to do all kind of throw the kitchen sink at it to, to, oh, man. to get that thing straightened up. And when we moved here to the new farm, um, the the first inspection with the new inspector over here uh, said, you know, this is a great spot for bees. You won't have high beetles here. And I said, yeah, what are you talking about? We're not going to have high beetles here because no, you're on the high dry ground. You probably won't see high beetles at all. Yeah. Well, long story short, we changed. We're only a half a mile away from ridge top to ridge top but the difference is the old farm that was a north facing ridge that had spring seeps all throughout it very anaerobic mucky nasty soil hard to get anything to grow um, but what it did is it created a lot of opportunities for hive beetles here at the new farm on this ridge top where all the bees are and where the bees are in this kind of area here the soil is actually drains way better uh, and we just don't have the high beetle issue. We don't have to use murder sauce at all. And we haven't um, for a little while. So that's pretty cool. So the thing to think about is um, when you hear old timers say, all you need is a strong colony in full sun and you won't have hive beetles. That's not true. What's true in that is that in full sun, the sun is, is in drainable soil is keeping that soil drier and less moist and it's it's uh, less habitable for high beetles. But you take that same scenario like we did there, we watched doubles and triple 10 frame deeps crash with high beetles in full sun, but it was because the soil type was constantly wet. So uh, it's it's there's nuance. Uh, there's no absolutes with any of those things. So no, we haven't had to uh, use that uh, uh, at all, uh, definitely not last year or the year before. So um, that's that, that that's helping out pretty good. It's it's awesome, and it doesn't mean it doesn't come. There's not other things that you deal with, but it's just one that's lesser of an issue. You know, it's with the the last thing we'll say about the um, the hive beetles is, you know, when we have like a we make a little split, like a little queen cell, and it may be like a handful of bees in a box. Right. If that queen never comes back, doesn't start to lay, something happens to the cell, that colony does go into decline and crashes out. And then high beetles do move into there. But th there's a difference between a high beetle moving into a very tiny colony like that versus an epidemic of high beetles that you can't stop right. and you can't control. Yep. Kind of like what Bruce is facing down in his, in his Oz uh, Ozark yard. Um, so there, there is a there is quite a bit of difference there. And uh, quite a lot of nuance. So um, Tim also uh, mentions here that his hilltop apiaries always do better with beetles. Yeah. So, you know, there's something to, something to keep in mind there. So let's go ahead and uh, let, let's get into some of these uh, really fun tips uh, from folks. We're going to see if we can go ahead and, and pull uh, a couple of these up. Uh, let's start with Tom and Melissa. What a great couple. Tom and Melissa are just a phenomenal couple, and they were a pleasure to spend a short 24-plus hour weekend with. Um, just a phenomenal couple to be around. So we were, it was a pleasure to be around you and Tom, Tom and Melissa. So uh, Tom and Melissa, thanks for sending uh, these three tips. But uh, Tom and Melissa of uh, Via Honeybees, three tips slash secrets to success. Number one, build a plan slash budget that you both agree on that's that can be a challenge a lot of times um i think a lot of folks have the dreamer and then there is the other one that is the realist which one do you think we are <laughs> <laughs> and that can be that can be challenging because um you do need that other side of it 
to bring things together to keep you kind of on that line, not in line. Well, sometimes keep me in line, but more so on the line, on the path. Um, and so uh, that, that's a great tip. Number two, oh my gosh, look at this one. Uh, hot tip from Tom Sosman, fellas. You ready? Feed your wife by noon. Wow. Okay. So Tom literally was raised by a large family mama. Yes and amen. Tom, it learned that that's that's exactly he was learned. That's, he was learned. Feed your wife by noon. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Ain't and nobody amen. got time for no hangriness. Nope. And I can get hangry too. Yep. Uh, number three, learn to compromise. Yes. Yeah, that's um, that that's one that I think we you will always be checking yourself on because sometimes we can get so passionate and so headstrong on a certain thing that there's not a lot of room for compromise. Well, there's there's always room for compromise. You just have to compromise. Right. <laughs> some some days that's easier than uh, easier said than done, isn't it? So, uh, Tom. And Melissa, the, thanks for your input uh, tonight on the uh, three things that uh, you find uh, to be help you with be successful uh, with beekeeping in your marriage. Those are great. Oh, there's so many good ones here. Let's let's let's. You just gotta pick them. We're just gonna just pick, pick them. We're just gonna run with it here. Yep. Okay, so check this out. Oh, all this right. This is fun. So this is our friends Fred and Annette Dunn. Of course, you all know Fred Dunn. But, uh, you know, check that out. Look at that. Look at all those cameras. He, he's just, it's, he looks like, um, he's like the Chuck Norris of photographers. He is. He does have that Chuck Norris I hope he's stance. not listening. He's going to get a big head. He is. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's intimidating. And Annette, amazing. She's you so sweet. You absolutely radiate in that picture. It's awesome. So uh, Fred writes, uh, we served in the Navy together. We built our home from scratch wow. nine months straight. We do photography together. We keep bees together. We've been together for 29 years. And that success comes easily because we absolutely enjoy each other's company and are never, ever bored. Humor at every single turn, <laughs> laughing at ourselves, endless respect both ways. Our own grown kids don't know what to make of us. It just doesn't seem real, but it certainly is love. We are just happy to see each other every single morning that's awesome that is awesome you know fred has uh i, I love fred's sense of, of humor it, it is so dry uh it is so sarcastic that it, it keeps you on your toes i can't can you imagine the jokes back and forth between fred and annette in the morning over coffee fred and annette thank you uh for sharing that with us that's cool You guys are awesome. Fred is this spectacular person to be around, and our kids just absolutely get a kick oh, yeah. out of being around him sure every do. single time they are able to. Yep. It's so fun. All right, let's go here to... There we are. Oh. Ricky and Ruth Rorick, Horizontal Bees. Man, we love them. They're They're so awesome. Um, some great tips here. Why don't you read these ones? <clears throat> so this is Ricky and Ruth just took the, oh, 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 okay. So this was a picture from taking his little lady out for Valentine's day. And number one is God, 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 God. Number two, communication. And number three, patience. I'm still working on number two and three, but she's still loves me <laughs> <laughs> ricky buddy i am working on two or three uh especially today uh that's that's something i think we always fall short a lot of times is uh communications having enough patience and uh so i appreciate you guys sharing. They're, they're they're always so fun to be around they were up here um several times this past year and it's always great to uh see them we just saw um ricky and his crew at the uh the EMBA workshop that we just came from. And so it's always great uh, to see. I didn't get to folks. see Ruth. No, Ruth, so, Ruth wasn't there. It was Ricky, Ricky and his, and Ricky, his, his, yeah. his team. 
team member is buddy there. Yeah. So I was like looking for, I was looking for Ruth and I'm like, I'm sorry, Ricky. Like, I'm just looking around you for a second. Hold on. Oh, no, it's just you. Okay. Well, <laughs> and he's great, but Ruth, she ices the cake. Yeah, absolutely. It's just how it is. Yeah, Tim writes, uh, she's a beautiful artist. The horizontal hives she paints are works of art. They absolutely. They are. They are. I really blessing, enjoy. Blessing, blessing. Really enjoy her work. Yep. Yep, for sure. Ruth is a blessing. There's so many great ones here uh, to, to choose. For. Let's, let's go ahead and go to. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's go to uh, Greg and Marianne from Rockbridge Farmstead. Uh, they've got a Facebook page and a podcast. They're uh, they're really neat folks. Um, I have to get my glasses on here. Let's see if I can make that one Yeah, bigger. that one's really small. I would help you. Okay, so number one, have a game plan for the tasks you'll be working on that day. We often discuss the overall plan and then figure out what we're going to do uh, individually. This way we can work together to get things done more efficiently. And uh, yes and amen. That's, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. And number two, remember to encourage each other. It keeps you focused and reminds you on why you are doing this together. Yes. That, that's a great one. It's really Very easy good. to get lost in the weeds and um, kind of forget why you're doing it to begin with. And uh, number three, listen to each other's ideas and dreams. You each bring something unique to the table to help make your bee yard and business flourish. That's a fact. That's that's true. That's that's one of the you know the the beautiful story of creation of Adam and Eve is Adam needed a helpmate, and and God removed a rib from Adam and made woman from man and i think it's a beautiful thing because that's exactly what we need that missing piece of us are our wives and i think it's a beautiful thing when you can line up in life to the fact where you can communicate you can have you can dream together you can build something together you can work through all those problems because believe me it's tough uh it, it's tough a lot of times and i think uh being grounded and having some of these things that we fall back on, some of these things that we use every single day to keep us uh, moving forward is really important. And we're going to talk more about that later. So Greg and Marianne from Rockbridge Farmstead, uh, thanks for sharing that with us. That's awesome. Let's jump over to Kentucky. Kentucky. Jamie and Brandy Wynn, great folks, uh, sweet Harlan honeybees. I love the photo. Isn't that great? That's awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. I like them. We, we saw them at the Bee Expo. Great folks. Um, why don't you read these ones? All right. So number one, we always keep God first. Yes and amen. Number two, always remember everything happens for a reason. Keep faith and trust in him. That's good. Mm-hmm. And number three, sacrifices have to be made for both sides. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. That's good, huh? Wow. That's a that's a whole sermon uh, in and of itself. But yeah, that, that's, that's important. Um, n number two really comes to mind. Always remember everything happens for a reason. Keep faith and trust in him. There, there's so many things on the homestead or on the farm or in the bee yard or in the business that can seem like it is absolutely falling apart or that thing that you're waiting on um, to just come through to just float the boat a little longer doesn't. And you're thinking, what in the world's going on here? And then when you just trust, the wind picks up, the boat starts moving, and it takes you places that you can never even imagine. Uh, so keeping the faith and trusting in him, that, that that's beautiful. Sacrifices on both sides, I think, is is also important not to make mountains out of out of molehills. You know, a there's lot of us enough are stubborn. Mountain, there's there's, there's enough. enough mountains to climb. There's there's plenty, isn't there? Yeah, let's not make any extra mountains over over molehills. If there's if there's something that we can work out and and put away quickly, let's do that. Not not make. Are you worse. seeing some um, overlapping consistency Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Are you, are you getting that like same, you know, listen, everything doesn't have to be vanilla, but vanilla is 
awesome if you just take the time to appreciate it, right? Absolutely. So I think looking and saying that keeping God first, absolutely. But then number two brings it right back to him again. And sacrifices, well, God did send his only son to sacrifice for us. So there's that. That's that that's what it takes. There, there's you can't you can't just take, 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 or you will find yourself alone and by yourself trying to figure everything out. And that's that's just no no place to be, is it? Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys Jamie so much. And Brandy Wynn, thanks for uh for sharing that with us. Awesome. I'm loving these guys. Let's go over to the big dog himself, Randy and Elizabeth. Uh, that was a lot of funny. This is there's a really funny story in this one, um, but I, I promised I promised I wouldn't I wouldn't wouldn't get into it. But uh, what a great couple! It's always fun seeing them around. Uh, you, you just uh, they're they're both just have that that thing about them where they're just. They they radiate a lot of love um, and they're they're a lot of fun uh, to be around. So we've got to Randy and Elizabeth McCaffrey, uh, the Dirt Rooster and Mrs. Dirt Rooster, and ask uh, well, you know what are their three tips or secrets for finding uh, success uh, in a beekeeping marriage or in a homestead? Number one, faith. Isn't that cool? I mean that's I I, I love it that this is a reoccurring theme. Now, we didn't vet anybody. We didn't say, hey, but this is beautiful. That number one, the number one most important thing is faith. Number two, romance. Number three, hard work. I love that. That's um, that's important. You know, f faith obviously is what grounds us and, and keeps us and uh, is, is keeping our compass uh, tuned Romance, I think, is something that no one really ever wants to uh, talk about because it gets you can get out there on the weeds. But you've got to find ways to be able to connect. Uh, and you know, I think we would all we're all adults here and, and can say that we're all going to connect differently. But finding uh, knowing your partner's love language and to, to be able to connect in that way is huge. Otherwise, you just don't have that same kind of relationship. I think we can all say when you feel connected. And you know what the plan is, uh, and you, you know the steps that you're going to take, and you know that everything that you do is grounded in faith, and you're able to express your love for one another. That's a life where joy and happiness is just the consequence of living that kind of life. And I think that's what folks yearn for, and I think that's a really important aspect. So, Randy, thanks for for bringing that up. Number two, romance, and number three, hard work. I mean, that's. There's a lot of us, I think, that we're, we're just tuned up that way, where we just want to keep digging in, keep working, keep going. You know, and I think that that's, that's also the homestead and the pioneering spirit is just to keep going, isn't it? I Yeah, absolutely. A homesteader spirit, a pioneer spirit, um, a pilgrim spirit um, was to step out in faith and forge forward. Yeah, can you imagine, you know, being being the pioneers and just, you know, literally cashing whatever you could put together and put into a wagon and get a get a, a team of horses together and trust that there was a better future, but you had to risk life and limb and everything to get there. But to have that kind of faith, you know, it, I, there, there's a, a part of me would love to have been there and experienced that. The other half of me thinks I'm not tough enough. <laughs> You know, no matter how tough I think I am. I think they were eating the gristle from the coffee to to make themselves tough. I mean, enough. how how beautiful of a scenario would that be to where, you know, you had you had West with us, with the Oregon. You name whatever of those the several different well I movements mean, out there. Go a little further back than that, and pilgrims were coming over on boats to a land they had never even been yeah. able to fathom. So faith and knowing that. God is always your number one, can move mountains. It's amazing to think about whether you're hopping on the boat uh, as a pilgrim or you're hopping in a wagon as a pioneer 
but you're you are completely trusting that this is the plan for you and you're going to head and go in that direction and there are so many times along those road and paths where you know there are uh there are attacks and there are loss and there is death and there is starvation and there is everything going wrong and not everybody made it but imagine how beautiful it must have felt to know that that was God's plan for you and you're going to take one step in front of the other no matter what and just keep moving whether you, whether you saw the end of the trail or not imagine being all the way at the end of the trail and you're setting up camp for the first night on the piece of ground that you feel God's called you to be on after making it through that entire journey that's that's a beautiful thing to think about I would I would love to just experience that just just to know that all of that hardship all of that struggle all of that pain and loss and trusting and faith and there you are in in that in that moment fully appreciating that that's to me that's pretty cool and I think in a, in a lot of points in our life as married couples on farms and homestead and bee yards you know we have our own Oregon trails we have our own Mayflowers we have our own points in time where we're we, it feels like that is exactly what's going on setting up a bee yard or starting a business or trying to just pull it all together is that one um do you remember that one game I don't know if it was like Atari or something in the in the 80s uh was it like the Oregon frog? trail no the Oregon frog trail? trying to get across all the cars oh and like you don't get ran over you had to hop you had to hop and then go over and up up and maybe it was the one that was just a joystick I can't remember it's like sometimes you feel like that and the other times you feel like the Oregon Trail where it's like you're not sure if you've just lost all your beans or <laughs> <laughs> rice or whatever it was I don't even remember the game <laughs> Frogger okay somebody knew it Frogger yeah okay <laughs> oh, okay oh yeah uh. absolutely <laughs> so anyways i'm sorry i'm uh, just uh ranting there but uh, uh randy and elizabeth mccaffrey thank you for uh for awesome. sharing your three tips there love them okay let's see what we got here i'm not used to all this fancy screen work i mean it's i'm, I'm surprised i've made it go this long j right. and j let's see jeremy and, and jackie. jackie sleepy holler homestead awesome great folks they're um they're they're a lot of fun it's always great seeing them um so what uh, their their three things is um a little friendly competition keeps it fun that's why we do this oh that's why we do his and hers uh, it's easier when you have two different perspectives when looking at a problem that's good number three have a good mentor nothing beats the help of a good mentor in any part of homesteading learn from others it's the best way that's great jeremy and jackie had some great great points in there it's it's definitely easier when you have two different perspectives especially when you appreciate the other perspective well and i think the his and hers i think um we've never quite done beekeeping like that but I can see where if you are, um, how do you say, athletically minded, that a, a little friendly, healthy competition would be phenomenal because, well, I mean, you know, you know, is Jackie rocking it or like, is it Jeremy? Jeremy's or, probably trying like, to keep up. I, I can I see think, them going know, down two different B rows, like who's going to get through and yeah, get through them all. Gonna, da, 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 you know, da, da, who's, actually that's true if you remember right um we've got an interview with them they uh, came out to show us something really cool um but they they do i, I remember them talking about they they are they are competitive they've yeah. got the they've got the hives and they go back and forth to see which ones you know, they they take a certain hive each um exclusively and it's which one is going to overwinter it's a competition for them which one's going to come out of the winter here's the thing there is nothing better than healthy competition and i think um our our uh, society as a whole is um, is is a 
probably transitioning away from that. But I, I really feel like as a, as a mother, especially when, when you have a little healthy competition, like who can sweep the floor faster, you're going to get things done two to three times faster than if you just go, Hey kid, can you sweep that floor? Or, you know, I mean, who, who can get through the most beehives, but you have to look for these three, yeah. These these two things, and don't give them too many options. But like, I, it's phenomenal. I, I think when you when you do when you think about things like tasks that you have to get done anyway, it's like, well, hey, you know, instead of me being the only one doing this, how about we make a little friendly competition out of it and see, you know, and it can be super fun. I see that all the time, and it just, it's awesome. I love those. I love those. Yeah, that's that's a. Um, I don't know that I want to get into a who can get stung the most competition, but uh, some days it it feels like uh, that that's a competition you leave for for somebody else. But it's a lot of fun to. Truth be told, we're out there working in the bee yard, and I I can just feel you looking over at me, and you're just you know just trying to get up just one high but further, get it further down the road and further down the road and further down the row, and and then when you beat me, mm -hmm. you know you know you should be proud. You know, it's, it's, and I, and I love that. Um, I you think, just blame it on the fact that your hands are bigger or something, or are, you don't yeah. wear gloves. So, you right. know, you're getting work, stung. Yeah. You got to work slower. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just blame it on that. But uh, Jeremy and Jackie, uh, Sleepy Holler Homestead, uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Jeremy, right now, without getting into the details there, um, uh, just had a little trip to the hospital. So, if you would, folks, keep, uh, Jeremy uh, and your thoughts and prayers. Yes. Uh, great folks. I really enjoy spending time with there. So Jeremy, we'll keep you in our prayers yes. and uh, uh, pray for a, a quick and speedy recovery. Yes. Yes. And amen. Got a couple left here. I could do this all night long before we get to the, before we get to the next one. Uh, Bruce is, uh, Bruce is tuning in. He must have. I did not know this about Bruce's wife. So I would love to read this. I love that you are talking about this. My wife, Annette, comes from a long line of pioneer stock. Wow. Her ancestors were some of the early pioneer settlers to Utah. That is so awesome. Okay, so Bruce, I think we need to have a chat about this. I think so. I think I we think need to have a, just the amazing. ladies the ladies get on here and, and talk. Um, how cool of a story would that be to learn about that? Faith in I like what Bruce, uh, what Bruce says here. Faith in every footstep applies to the pioneers and still applies today absolutely it does yes bruce hope uh hope you guys are having a great night tonight okay let's see uh so uh we got jeremy and jackie here uh they're they're tuning in tonight and it says uh, keeps us on our toes it keeps our hives thriving jeremy has four hives and i have three That's however awesome. Mine has pulled more honey. See, ah, she's a competitor. Ah, she is. I can tell. <laughs> it was so funny. When we had them, they came to visit us, and I could tell that she absolutely loves, um, and she does not brag. She doesn't. She's very humble about it. But the smile that she gets on her face, it just radiates through the whole room <laughs> when she's telling an awesome story about uh, something that she did. And I just have to say, as the um, was that blue ribbon? What what color ribbon was? Oh that? yeah, no, they got they took they took first place. First yeah. place, first place ribbon. I can't remember the color because that Let's was a chaos chaos time. Oh, chaotic. <laughs> Let me just make up words because that's what I do best. Um, the amazing first place winner of, and I'm not exactly sure what what. Um, what was the... Here, I, I, I can figure out. Now, Brian Coper's not here. He's on a hot date tonight. Oh, man. So the fact that I can do any of this okay. without him is absolutely yeah. amazing. Okay, just post what the prize or what the award was for because I'm having a hard time oh, pulling my brain together. I guess I got... I'm going to pull it up right here. So oh, you are? Go okay. To there. Go He's going to pull there. it up and I'm just going to pretend as though I knew and just wanted you guys to see this phenomenal picture because it's awesome. Look at that. Okay, Look, so, okay. Are you showing it now? Okay. There they are. Look at, let's see. Are, are they, do you get it? Are they in it? Okay. Yep. So, okay. So, B Expo, does it say what? It, it's for um, honey flavored cotton candy. Amazing. Okay. So, I did not want to take like more than, I didn't want to take the whole handful or anything. I, I took did. a piece. Okay. Well, I was 
scarce. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll take a little tiny bite, but I'm not going to take much because I want to save it for everybody to have some. That's, that's the like large family d- divide and conquer mentality there. And so I was like, I just want a little bit. Honey confections, honey confections. That's what she won the ribbon for. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. You see her smile. It will literally warm a room. She has the most phenomenal smile and it was so good to see her win that. I'm sure you just absolutely knocked it out of the park. For me, it was a A++. So it was awesome. I think it's just I, phenomenal. I think, you know, I think she's going to just keep rubbing that in Jeremy's face too. Like, you know what? I'm, I'm, the, blue, I'm the blue ribbon winner here. Yeah. I'm, no, Check I'm just, it. just kidding. They, they both work together. What a, what a, what a great, uh, great couple there. All right, let's see. I'm having fun tonight. Uh, if you're if you're just checking in, um, we have there. I can't believe there is a hundred people on tonight you uh, guys, on Valentine's Day night. That's awesome. So we really appreciate you guys spending time with us. We weren't really thinking there was going to be anybody on tonight, but we still wanted to just do something a little different, a little special. If you're just tuning in to the Nature's Image Farm uh, B chat tonight, it's the Valentine chat yeah. where we're sharing uh, the three tips or secrets. Uh, for a successful beekeeping or homestead marriage for some from from folks all across the country, uh, so we really appreciate you guys uh, reaching out and uh, and sharing that with us. That's got, right. We've got a couple more to go here. And before we we wrap up anything or share the last couple tips and successes, I don't want to forget to remind you if you haven't liked or subscribed please do you can even do it while you're watching you can just open a second tab you don't have to click off or anything you can open a a, a second tab and just like and subscribe to the channel so that we know that you like us and if you don't like us it's okay you can just click off i won't i won't be hurt i won't have my feelings hurt i promise I want to thank uh, some of our channel members uh, for being on tonight. Uh, Nick Zooks here from Ohio. I appreciate your uh, your membership. Ten months uh, he's been a part of this channel. We really appreciate that. If you're interested in being a channel member, we're putting out some uh, member-exclusive videos over there. Uh, we'll drop some links a little bit later on on, on how you can do that. But uh, it's a fun way that you can support what we're doing here. And we can put out unique content uh, for you. So that's right. That's uh, uh, pretty cool. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and save save the best one for last. Okay. And it, and, and the reason, and I'll I'll tell you why. It's okay. The, matter of fact, you know what? Is it the last one? Well, if there was one that were to get a blue ribbon, I mean, it would probably be this one. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Aren't they awesome, Larry and Mary Ann Sears? Blue Ribbon Man himself. That's I right. mean, look at that. She even penned it on him. That's such right. a funny story. He's, he's Larry is. I I, I I love them to pieces. Um, it was funny. You know, we're at the uh, one of the the B conferences a couple years back, and the, the, here's Larry just beaming with this blue ribbon and says he just got a just uh, entered entered the the contest for best man and and took first prize. <laughs> <laughs> so. They're uh, they're a lot of fun. Just uh, they they are a great example, um, I think, for so many of us, of of how to live life, how to how to do things right. Of course, neither one of them will tell you that they've got it all figured out, um, that they're um, that they're that they're perfect. But I just I love what, uh, not just what they stand for, but I, I love um, they live by example, and I think that's a really important thing. These two young whippersnappers just are so much fun to be around. They are both so joyful. And I tell you what, when, when, you, when you're around somebody that truly just is so full of joy, it spills over that it's, it's, I don't know. I, is it is it just me, or sometimes when people don't spill it out, it's a little harder to like, you know, sit and simmer for a while. These two are so much fun and such a blessing. You could just sit there like all day long, and it's just so much fun. 
They're they're awesome. I think I want to be Larry when I grow up. He just he just gets <laughs> to be having all the fun. He's got all the toys, and um, it's just um, I I think what's what's can I can and cook and do all the fun things that they they all do. It's just so fun. He knows that what she loves, and he he wants to to help her do those things and she knows what he loves and she supports those things too. And I just think that is the beauty of love and, and happiness it with love. When you show love, happiness is that. Absolutely. Is that thing that comes after it's the, yeah. You know what's what's beautiful about them is is you know uh, when when you read that to to let your light shine for others so they see your good works and give the glory to your Father in heaven. That's exactly what they do. Yeah, uh, and it's it's beautiful to have them in this community, uh, and it's absolutely um, a blessing. So when I ask them what you know, what are your three? You know what what are your three hot tips? What are the three hot tips from the Sears? Yeah, here here we go. I love it. Number one. Number one. God comes first yes and amen put your spouse's wants and needs above your own and that is really hard i think for a, for a lot of us men that's that's hard to we're, we're so dedicated in doing all the work and trying to uh, bring in all the harvest and doing all those things that we're so minded on that that a lot of times i think i know we can be doing doing better i know i can be doing better um, with that is being more mindful of what does your spouse need? You know, where where are they at? Are you, have you have you checked in with them? It's so easy to just go 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 go, um, and we can sometimes justify that all day long. Uh, but uh, taking the time out to put your spouse's wants and needs above your own that that's a great one. So that the uh, note note taken um, on that one. And number three, don't forget to realize how God has blessed your life. And to be thankful for those blessings. I'm going to, I'm going to read out again. Number three. Don't forget to read how God has blessed your life. And to be thankful for those blessings. How many times, you know, have we, you're on a path and you feel like you're doing all the things you should be doing. And life is getting rough. And it's one step after the other. And it's one week after the other. And then one month. And then one season. And then one year. And then one decade. And all you're doing is you find that you're 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 the same work pattern, the same thought pattern, the same rut that you're in all the time, and you forget to look back at all of the road behind you. You forget to to be thankful and to and to remember how far you've come and whatever that that is, whatever that your walk is. It's so easy to forget all the blessings. You forget all the times where you asked for help and God showed up. You forget. All the times that you ask for a door to be open that you walk through, you forget all of those things. So I love what she says there uh, is is to be to be mindful of all the blessings that God has given us. Don't forget that as we're working on and doing the work. You know, it's also a good reminder um, that that God's always there. He's always answering that call. Uh, it's a matter of us to be of the right mindset to appreciate that and to be thankful uh, for all those things. I think. <clears throat> what what comes to my mind is going back to number one. Mm. No, it's right there. Do you want your bifocals? I didn't have my bifocals. God comes first. Absolutely. So when you put God first, all things fall into place. That's a hard one, I think, for a lot of folks to accept appreciate and practice well I think that comes with a walk it's it's one thing when you're looking for the answers and you're looking for those in all the places but I think when you are looking for the answers and the knowledge in the word and through God God then gives you wisdom and that wisdom you're able to build on day after day, week after week, year after year. And I think that is what continues your walk. When you, when you, when you read where it says, you know, to, to have fear of the Lord and fear of the Lord this, and you're thinking, why, why, why should I always be afraid? 
you know, for me, I think what it really means is, is to have that walk, have that relationship, have that reverence, have that honor, have God as number one. That is what that means to me. And when you do that, everything else falls in line. When you're seeking understanding and knowledge, wisdom comes right along with that. And that is the true gift is the wisdom of those things, because that is something that you can, you can, you can share, you can help with others, but it builds the, that solid foundation that you're building the rest of your life on. And that, that's a big deal. When you put number one as building that solid foundation, um, you won't be the one in the sinking sand. And I think that that's a really important thing. So if there's a lot that we can learn from experienced folks like Larry and Marianne, it's putting God first. So I love that. That was my, that was some of my, uh, thank you guys so much for sending those in. That's so awesome. Uh, Grammy's midwife, suburban homestead, been a member for 14 months. And, uh, she says, uh, marry your best friend, learn to laugh together, listen and communicate. God bless y'all. That, that's, that's true. You know, you've got to find time to laugh, especially in those moments where there's nothing laughable, but we can, when you can still find the, the, a, a way to do that, that really makes, makes a big difference, doesn't it? Well, you know, God calls us to love, but I think you really need to make sure you like the person that you're marrying. <laughs> it's, it's pretty helpful. Um, it's, it's pretty handy to, to really, if, when you say you love somebody, you know, this is a, this is a Valentine uh, chat about for with beekeeper. So if you're just now tuning in and you're wondering what in the is, world, you end up on the, the, the Dr. <laughs> Phil, Dr. Ruth, Dr. Oz, whatever this is. Um, oh, I don't know. I, it's, it's not just about beekeeping. It's uh, it's a lot about the nuts and bolts here and here um, that uh, makes a difference on what we do with these, whether that's beekeeping, uh, working in our community. Uh, it's, it's an important thing to take time to do that. Um, so we appreciate uh, everyone uh, tuning in tonight and, and being a part of uh, tonight's Valentine uh, Bee Chat. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them here in the comments below. We'll do our best to uh, uh, check in on that. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun when you can live life with not just someone you love, um, but someone that you really like and someone that you consider a friend. Um, it makes all the difference uh, in the world. Uh, Gary Stewart checking in from West Virginia. Got to keep the faith even in trying times. I am sure Greg knows what I am referring to. Uh, absolutely, buddy. It's um, it's it's been a, a, a tough season um, for a lot of folks. You know, it, it, we get into this this time of year, or if we are in this season of uh, the human existence, but the world is dark. It's uh, and there are a lot of folks who. Um, are really struggling right now, and they're they're struggling just to get by every single day. Uh, and and some folks have. Whenever you think that you're having a bad day, there is always somebody who's having it a lot worse. Uh, you never know what someone is truly dealing with or going through. And, um, you know, this sometimes hits home for all of us. You know, I recently lost a, a childhood friend and I'll, I don't want to get into any of those details, but um, it's no matter which way you try to explain it or think about it or justify it, it's just, it's, it's loss. And uh, to, to see someone leave this world that seems to leave it early, there's just no good way around accepting that. But there's, there's a lot to be said about the things that we can do um, while we're here on this earth. And I think putting God first in all things um, as, as a married couple, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do. I can't imagine trying to get through all of the tough times that you and I have um, without having that foundation. And it, it hasn't always been like that. But... Um, I would encourage folks if you're listening uh, tonight and and you're you're blessed with uh, to have a spouse on on this earth, you know, I'd spend a little time thinking about that. You know, are are you where you want to be 
with your relationship? Um, are you where you want to be with your your relationship with God as well? And I think there's a lot of things that we can do uh, to put those in, in, a, in a much better uh, position. Uh, John Lawler comments here and says, uh, he having the last word strengths in our relationship. Last words, yes, dear. That's uh, that's great. It's all about perspective, he says. Yeah, that's great. Uh, John also says here that Maggie and I wouldn't be where we are without the foundation built on the rock. That's that's absolutely, that's it. Um, we could talk a lot more about that, but putting God first, putting your family second, and putting your 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 business and all all things third. That's the order that it, it seems uh, where we are finding success in life, and we're finding that joy and happiness is the consequence. We're finding that's what we're we're called to do. Uh, Sweet Harlan Honeybees checks in. Awesome live chat. It's been a joy. Thank you all, uh, Jamie and Brandy. Thanks again for sharing uh, your three tips. Now it's Valentine's Day night, and you know uh, there's been over a hundred folks checking in tonight. Spending time you guys with us. are awesome. Thank we you really so much for you hanging out with us. Um, it, it's it's so awesome. We just want to take a little bit of time uh, to just say thank you uh, for all the folks who are following our channel, our podcast, uh, kind of just following along us all these years. Uh, some of you go way back, all the way back to when we were trying to figure out how to raise pigs in the woods and <laughs> and do all that. So uh, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's it's uh, we we thank you for also. Um, being open and spending time to to hear us and be a part of us and to get to know us a little bit better. That's that's this is who we are. This is what makes up the the foundation of all the things um, that we do. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, to remind you, we uh, had a, a really fun interview with uh, Brad at the Big Family Homestead uh, earlier this week, where there is they've got a brand new launch, Country Life nice News. news. And we were so, it was so fun to be a part of that. I, I can't wait to see um, what they do there. But uh, be sure to, to check in on those channels and see uh, that little interview with Susie and I on their channel. And be sure to come back to Nature's Image Farm later on here over the next week or so. And uh, check out the interview that we did uh, having Brad on the full, the full length. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it's, there's so many things that happen in life that I don't think that you can pin on uh, coincidence. But uh, what an amazing uh, orchestrated event that brought Brad to our life and, and us to his. Uh, so many beautiful parallels, homesteading and beekeeping and seven kids and faith and all these things just keep stacking up. But uh, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, Hallelujah uh, Bee Farm. I, I, I saw their shirts at the Bee Expo and I absolutely loved it. Now, I didn't get a chance to, uh, uh, to meet them or, or say hi. But uh, uh, Hallelujah, B, Hallelujah B Farms is great chat. Thank you all for what you do uh, for this community. You betcha. Oh, our buddy, uh, Jimmy's Neighborhood Bill, Bees. It was so fun to see um, him and Sharon were out here at the Creator Convergence. They, they've been, they drove all the way from Virginia uh, to buy uh, package bees. It's so fun uh, to see them. But uh, Jimmy says, thank you both for what y'all do. 40 years last October. For him and Miss Sharon, isn't that cool? Forty That's years, awesome! Wow, that is awesome. That is absolutely amazing. Got to give a shout out to our buddy Randy Seller, the Tar Heel Beekeeper. Thanks, Greg and Susan, for all you do. I got to thank uh, uh, Tar Heel Beekeeper Randy. Uh, man, I really appreciate you. every time that we post something. You're there and you're sharing it, and I tell you that really means a lot to us when you share those posts. Um, we see that. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for everything that you do um, for this community as well. And then uh, Pappy Richard. Uh, Pappy Richard writes, appreciate you both sharing your faith. Nothing better than being grounded in God first and foremost. We actually ran into Pappy and his wife um, at the hotel uh, when we were coming out uh, there at the B Expo. And maybe one or two mornings in a row over coffee. So um, that's a lot of fun to be able to um, to uh, be able to, 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 to fellowship and, and meet with folks there. And then our pal Nick Zooks writes, thank you for all the advice and equipment over the past few years. Nick, you betcha. Uh, we're, we're, we're glad to help in the ways that we that we can. we got a, another local legend that we'd love to spend time with too, uh, Scott and Melinda Boring. Uh, Scott writes, 40 years for me and my true love. Aww. Melinda, 
this August. Wow. Well, happy early anniversary. They're, they're so awesome. She's such an artist too. You know, I love seeing a couple's, many couples, almost every couple that we are blessed to be around, that, that, that the husbands have this admiration and I can't even put it into words, but when Scott talks about his wife and the things that she creates and the things that she does is just with such respect and he finds joy in her joy. And I think that is huge and that is awesome. And that is a blessing to everybody that hears you speak about her. So awesome, awesome job. That's just and he doesn't need me to tell him that because, you know. <laughs> great folks, a great family. Yes. Yeah. Uh, our pal, uh, Keith Spillman, we just had Keith on on one of the pop-ons uh, not that long ago. Half Tracks and Honeybees, uh, 43 years for me and Michelle Man. this month. 43 years. Uh, we saw them at the BX, but that was a lot of fun. 43 years. That's we're, so we're, awesome. we're only 24, year, 24 years in. I feel like in. a young pub compared to all these awesome people. I hope what you don't. The world? Yeah, I hope you don't trade me in for wow. younger level. Well, then that, I would have to start all over again. What are you talking about? Well, this is also I like I like to see this too. Uh, Alhambra Orchard and Apiary. Shout out to Mrs. Alhambra, the glue that keeps it all together. Oh, behind every good man's an even better woman. And I, that's I I absolutely believe that. Uh, and so I, I love to see uh, the fellas shouting out their wives too. Because let let's be honest. 99% of the reason all this works together uh, is, is because we've got good wives that are working humbly behind the scenes, making all the things happen, taking care of us, making sure all the things are actually <laughs> happening. Uh, we're just the schmucks that can lift heavy stuff and can get stung. That's, that's, that's really a lot of what that is. So uh, I love seeing that there. Uh, Sharon writes, uh, her husband and I, or my husband and I just celebrated 44 years years on the ninth wow yeah happy oh anniversary goodness. that you is guys so cool are so awesome look at all this and then i uh, gotta thank uh, carol j mccarthy logsden thank you for the that 20 dollar super chat thank you for being a great example of what a christian marriage should look like well that's that's humbling we're we are no way perfect uh we there are a lot there are there are hard days and there are good days um but um what do you what do you say as we close out? Let's what do you think a couple of our our tips would be? What 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 are some of the most important things that you think about? You know, as we look back at, you know, after with after folks saying 43 and 44 years and all that, 24 doesn't seem that long. But but I remember uh when we got when we got married in grandpa's soul country church, you know, we were young. We were 18 years old. Um, we didn't have anything figured out. All we knew is that we loved each other, and that was the path forward. Uh, and there were a lot of folks that sat there and said they are never going to make it. Kind of felt like that. What was that song? It um, uh, doesn't matter. <sighs> but we just, just heard the story. We just heard the story, you know. And um, a wonderful woman sat back in the church and said, "I give it a year or less." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And, and she are. had to laugh and tell us because, you know, 20, 24, almost 24 years later and, uh, of marriage, you know, it's, uh, there, if you think the moment you get married, that you've reached the epitome, that you've reached the top of the mountain, God will humble you. And I think Absolutely. every time you think you've got it figured out, strap on your seatbelt, you're about to be humbled again. So what I know is that I don't know anything, and that's why God comes first. And when I don't seek him first, I can't serve anyone else well. So what I know is that I don't know anything without him. I think that's the best um, 
the best tip or secret I think that we could we could pass on is that we don't have to know all the answers. Nope. There, there's no Isn't way there's, so there's, awesome? there's no way to know all the answers and there's actually something you know kind of freeing and and saying that i'm never going to know all the things about these bees i'm never going to know all the things about these milk because i'm never going to know all the things about this or that or the other yep i'm never going to know all the secrets of life i'm never going to know what the answer is or why this just happened or what the next i don't know all that but i know the one who does yep and yes, when we and put amen. our trust in him, all these things follow. And I think that's the most important thing that we could pass on to folks is to put your trust in God and everything else follows. Um, great comment here, uh, farmhouse, kitchen. Uh, Jesus being in the center of our lives is the foundation of our marriages, uh, and you are a great example. So thanks, thanks for saying that. So that's a, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but a lot of times because we have a YouTube channel or a podcast or we have folks that come in here to the shop, you know, and, and they, they see us and we have a lot of fun and everyone knows I'm crazy about you. We've been married for 24 years, but everybody knows I'm just crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's I don't I don't want anyone to think that we are some kind of uh, poster board marriage or this is like this is you should live up to this or this is what the 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 example is only the only example in us is that when we trust in God God works in our life but there are days where it is absolutely uh, it's it's hard, and there are days where it is beautiful, and it's it's ups and downs and mountains and valleys. But what I can say is that the the God on the mountain is the God in the valley. He yes. is there all the time. Yep. Uh, and uh, trusting in Him makes all the difference. Yeah. In, in the world, doesn't it? Yes. If someone Hallelujah Bee Farm says Susie, they said we wouldn't last a year. When we were high school sweethearts, 48 years and counting. That's I love awesome. that. Susie, I can still remember the day. Uh, I, I can see, <laughs> oh, I can just, I can just, I can see you walking in Mrs. Garman's English class. And I'm just was thinking, I'm just thinking this bum's going to start, try to steal my notes again. And I was just head over heels and, uh, just so he doesn't fail history. So what 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 actually happened is is I was just you know believe it or not I was not the best student. I I was I was the kind of kid where I looked at school, and I said I'm never going to use this stuff ever. Why am I wasting my time here? I need to be out somewhere building something, doing something, growing something. I need to be not doing this. And I really struggled to try to force my mind to make my hands write on paper and to memorize all of these words just so i could memorize the sequence of sentences right on a test so i would pass the test but never really know what in the world all that information was i had a really hard time you know i hope our kids aren't watching this our kids are <laughs> probably not watching this um but as the homeschool mom <laughs> as a homeschool mom that's this is the difference though is when we, you and I were in the public school system, and it's no, not a knock if, nope. if you're a public school teacher or well, your kids are in public school. It's, we're not saying that, but for us, you know, the, the model was uh, cram all the stuff, memorize it so you can pass these tests so you look smart, so the school district looks smart, so we can get the funding, so we can keep pretending that we're smart when all we're doing is pushing the kids through the door and out. And, oh, you better get off your soapbox. Okay. You might fall. But for knucklehead, stubborn kids like me, that's just not how I learned. Yeah. And I, it was a constant struggle. Yeah. And so thank God that he put this just pretty girl <laughs> walking through the door <laughs> who somehow looked at me and thought I was something and uh, let me copy homework. And so because of you and copying your homework, I was able to get through just how many classes by to graduation i mean history and uh what else what else were there well we were in english together Eng we were in you english didn't together copy my art so no. that was good art was the only one i could do 
art. <laughs> I loved art. Art was, but anyways, we're I'm I'm uh, I'm getting lost in the I weeds digress. here. But uh, anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So all the way back then, you know, you, uh, you were there, and uh, and I still let you copy my notes today. You do yeah, absolutely. Isn't that crazy? Well, here, I'm here's, still the note taker. I'll never forget this. It was so fun. I can remember sitting. I remember exactly where I was sitting at. Uh, I was all the way left hand row, second seat from the back, and uh, you were two rows over. And after copying the homework, second seat from the front, second seat from the front. Yep. Same. Yep. And I remember you saying, you know, after all this homework you've been copying and you need, you owe me at least take me out on, on Friday night. On a date. Yeah. On a date. And I said, did this, did this beautiful girl just, did, did she just say that I owe her a date for copying <laughs> her homework? And I'm thinking, <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. I'm thinking, are you got to be, are you, are you, yes, absolutely. Are you kidding me? I mean, and I was so, I was really an extreme, <laughs> extreme introvert too. And so, uh, the you girl, you wouldn't guess that now. You wouldn't, yeah. The, so, because you, you put it out there and, uh, here, all, so here we are all these years later. So many fun stories, you know, so many fun, great times, so much, so many rough times, times that we learn from. But, um, we have been through every valley and walked every mountain side by side in 24 years I'm, we've got at least another 20 we've years we've been to together catch up. longer than we've been apart in our life wow that's crazy to think about we've been married 20 we've been gonna together be, gonna longer. Be 24 years marriage but we we were married at 18 so we've been well married longer than we had existed apart do you think we'll grow up and be like Larry and Mary and Sears? Maybe one day. I hope so. Maybe one day. A couple last comments here before we let all of you get back to your very romantic dinners. And if you're like us, it's going to be a very romantic. Um, uh, <laughs> you already got pink spaghetti. What are you talking about? I, I did get, that Come was, on. That was, that, was, that was good. Thank you. I'm here working late at the shop and uh, she even had dinner ready and um, so, so thank you for that dinner church and back here for the live stream. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Elizabeth is, uh, is, uh, commenting here on the dirt roosters, uh, channel Hi, says, uh, this is Elizabeth. When we went to ask the pastor to marry us, he flat out told us he didn't want to do it <laughs> because he knew we'd get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> that was 32 years ago. And by God's grace and probably a different pastor, we are still together. Oh, isn't that cool? That's awesome. What a testimony. Wow, that's cool. God can do anything through all. Yeah, through him, all things are possible. Look at this. Scott Boring, man, I absolutely love forever Randy Travis. Ever, yeah. Yes. I'm going to love you forever and ever. Amen. Yep. That's awesome. Well, hey, we've had a lot of fun tonight. Um, it's, uh, it's, for us, it's such an honor to spend time with you folks, uh, whether we're talking about bees, whether we're talking about life, whether we're talking about starting seeds or whatever that we get into. We just appreciate that you are here with us along this journey. I, I really can't put that into words enough, but but to, to have you guys here and a part of that uh, is a really big deal. And I just want to say uh, thank you. I want to thank you for all the super chats tonight, including Bruce. A uh, hashtag love is in the air. Hashtag, hashtag faith, faith in, in every, every foot. I, I love that. That's a good one. Hashtag for the love of bees. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I really we do appreciate you guys so much. Um, if you like this sort of thing with uh, me and Susie just kind of getting on and talking about whatever is on our heart and mind topic, let us know. Let us know in the comments <laughs> below if you want to see more Greg and and uh, and and Susie chats and. Maybe we'll find a time and place to do that and maybe put them out to uh, the members only section of the channel or wherever um, is, is a good fit. But it's it's an, it's important to us to be able to, you know, kind of share not just the beekeeping things, but to share where we are in, in life, because that really does uh, that. That's the mold that everything else kind of flows through is who we are as, as people. Yeah. Here, guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Beekeeping is not 100% of our life. And it's, I probably shouldn't be any secret, but 
we have so much more to give and we have received so much more through love and blessings from people through beekeeping than than just the bees and 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 the bees are amazing and i think they draw you closer to our creator but i think he developed a community for us that is so long and wide it's so awesome and it's been such a blessing and i think that is just i don't have words i don't have any i don't have enough beautiful words to say the the thing about it is uh we feel like god has called us to beekeeping and has put us in a, in a place where bees are the conduit to the people we've we've said that over and over again uh, and for us you know there are a lot of great places and, and areas to go f- listen and learn nuts and bolts beekeeping and why that's important um th- th- sometimes a lot of things go other parts of our lives starve uh, because if if we're not right here and we're not right here does it matter what we do here you know there's a great great scripture what would it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul you know it's something we got to keep in mind with no matter what we're doing in life is we got to be right here first um and that that's an important thing to share so uh if if um we we'd love to share um just who we are and what life and how uh, how good god has been uh to us in our life so we want to thank you um for being uh, along here All right i got to give a quick shout out to our pals steve and jane uh, here in Hopo, S and J, honey, you guys are awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys are more awesome. So it's always good seeing you. Looking forward to when the season gets back going again. Uh, seeing you guys here in the shop once we uh, once we get opened up. I love this one. <laughs> A short memory. <laughs> look at that, Keith. Keith Spillman. Look at that. He is a marriage counselor extraordinaire. Write a book. Write a book. That's a awesome. short memory also comes in handy. A in a marriage that's right that's uh i i i feel like he's i felt like that one's pointed <laughs> pointed at me tonight uh, <laughs> yeah uh sarah at burke meadow farm says uh nice listening to you susie and greg sarah thanks for uh thanks for spending time with us uh cottonland apiary says we missed the sunday afternoon podcast at uh, life is 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 so um so crazy now with with the bee business like it's never been before, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, but one thing that we um, have really made a priority and that we will continue to make a priority is our business, our shop, uh, everything is completely closed on Sundays. Uh, Sundays are for church uh, and for family. So I don't think that you'll see us on a Sunday afternoon live podcasts. Uh, maybe we can record something and then, then kick it out have it pre-recorded and go out on a Sunday. Uh, but it's, it's important for us to stay centered and grounded and spend time with each other. So Sundays. Take that time to rest. Yep. yep. Yeah. So I um, had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, I want to thank everybody again for all of your very valuable input. Yeah. Tips and secrets. You guys uh, are amazing. To a successful beekeeping or homesteading marriage. You guys are awesome. I want to thank all the folks who uh, chimed in and, uh, Gave us all their incredible feedback. Susie, what's coming up here for the next week or so uh, with you and all the things here at Nature's Image Farm? Oh, my. Everything. Everything. All the things. Okay. Do I say all the things? I just get to say all the things. Is there anything that you're really excited about this next week? Excited about? No more chickens. (laughs) Tell me it's no more chickens. Well, I did see some. Oh, boy. I saw some, and they were chirping at me at Rural King. They were trying to talk to me. What? What's that mean? Do they come with dipping sauce? They might. We might have to just... Uh, can we Can we put a pin in that one? Can we... I'm, I'm willing to compromise. Dun, dun, dun. I'll tell you what. You... You can have chickens. If I can have bees. Okay, check. 
<laughs> you know, I, I actually, I couldn't think of anything that I wanted. Because Cows? I feel like, no. Goats. No. No, Sheep. stop it, stop, stop. I'm going to cut your mic off. No goats, Rabbits. no goats. Okay, we're done. Turkeys. We're done. Okay, we're done. We're done. No more. Okay, well. Like and subscribe. Folks, before, yeah, like, oh my gosh, this before is going, oh wow, off. this is going great. Yeah, before we get in roped into goats or anything else tonight, folks, I just want to say how much we love you. We appreciate you. Yes. You guys are awesome. Uh, we look forward to see you guys again soon. Uh, let us know in the comments below, what are your three tips for a successful beekeeping or homesteading marriage, leave your tips below. Yes. We would love to learn from you guys as well. And all the people in the community can read through and see those tips too. Absolutely. So important. We can all share and, share. and, and learn from each other. Yes. Uh, coming up here in the next week or so, uh, we, wow, I can't even, my brain's so fried right now, um, but we are getting very close to being sold out on nukes. So if you are interested in nukes, don't wait around a whole lot longer. Yes. Um, if you're interested in getting on our uh, package route, um, we have uh, availability on the April 26 route. And we also um, just got another um, boost in how many packages we were able to get on the April 13th pickup date, which is on a Saturday. So we have a two, not two Saturday pickups. We have availability. The first route is already sold out. The second one was sold out. We added it. We were to add a little bit more to that. So don't wait around. Um, we would love to see you here. Um, don't delay. Don't delay. Um, what else? Queens are nearly all sold out until July. We'll talk more yeah, about that be, later. Um, put a but, pin in uh, that one, huh? The fun stuff is up here. Endura Hive, Wax Dip. We've got some incredible uh, things coming down the pike. It's so busy. Keep an eye out on our website at naturesimagefarm.com yes. for all these things to hit, including some brand new products that you'll see. We'll talk more about all those later. Are you going to put links in the in we'll, the description we'll below some or links, something like I that? Just, I just always want to make sure just to remind folks that uh, those things are out there. Those are available. Tonight is all about I Love Susie. And I got to find out, did you save me any of those strawberries? Are there any of those... Chocolate-covered uh, strawberries left? I think they are gone. Sorry about that. Maybe next time. I knew oh, I should have bought you flowers. They smelled so I knew good, I should have bought you flowers. Maybe there would have been some strawberries left. Oh. Well, hey, wherever you're at, we just want to say... Da, 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 da. Oh, that's nice. That's da, good. Da, 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 da. Good night. This was not a Desilu production, but uh, Greg and Sue, Sue no. I, I, I got nothing. Greg and Sue is, no, I, I can't okay. do it. I'm sorry. Let's, I was not blessed just, with the singing, Gene. Um, let's just jump off here before everyone <laughs> jumps off before us. And it's just me and you just <laughs> laughing and, and having fun and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, we love you guys. Uh, we'll see you the next time around. As always, we want to remind you to be the lighthouse. And be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.